guys, welcome back to Home Built. And in this episode, we are going to hopefully start building the body wiring room for the Alferrari. All right, guys, welcome back. And um, those of you who missed it last week, I started laying out the foundation for the wiring loom for the Alferrari. Um, for those of you who missed it, I'll put a link up above so you can catch up and uh, please subscribe if you haven't already. So last week's episode did seem to be reasonably popular laying out the foundation for the loom. And uh, some of you hadn't seen the rope method before. It's not something that I came up with, but uh, it is something that is uh, quite a good method to get your head around joining every piece of every component, electrical component in the car all together. And then um, I'll show you how I develop it from there. There are a couple of uh, suggestions, people saying that uh, I should get a wiring loom out of an existing car. That is not a very good option on, um, basically it, it might've been years ago when most cars were quite simple. Most cars these days are CAN bus. Uh, they use different size wires and they have too many wires. Like I've got the Audi uh, that I took the engine out to put into the Rockster. Uh, I still have that car sitting here. I could take the loom out of that car. A, it's a lot of work removing the loom from a, uh, a modern car. It means basically removing, gutting the entire car, taking out every bit of plastic, all the dash. Like it would be at least a day, a good hard day's work, just getting everything out of the car before I could even start tackling the loom. And it's not laid out the way that I want it. So I'd have to completely butcher it and uh, and make it uh, work for my car as it is. And there's too many wires. It'd just be, it's far more work than making a loom from scratch. Far, far more work. There were a couple of things though that I did mess up and uh, let me take you through and I'll show you that now. So uh, one of the things that uh, some of you did pick up on that I did mess up was in here in the doors. So when I ran my wires to the doors, and obviously this car didn't originally have any wiring uh, going into the doors, there was no need. Um, what I did is uh, I made my hole into the, uh, the body of the car and I did look at it and go, okay, yeah, well that's not going to interfere with the door opening and closing and it'll run through cleanly into the car. What uh, I should have done though is I should actually, and I'm gonna redo it, is run the top wire through at a upper higher level than the bottom wire because with the the uh, the wire will be bending a lot all the time and being down low here it's going to bend quite a bit whereas if you look at a lot of factory cars they actually have one mount high and one mount low that's because when the wire comes out it's sort of just twisting a little bit rather than bending a lot in the middle if you imagine they're coming out together they're bending like this rather than being high and low and it's just sort of twisting a little bit so the wires will last a lot longer coming out high and exiting low so i'm going to do that and then also we need to drill a hole through my tunnel over here so that I can get my wires down to my starter motor, um, the gearbox for the reverse light and the speed signal and also the alternator. All right, so uh, my rope has been run all the way through the car now, joining up all of the main systems, at least as far as I need it to, and I can do other measurements from different spots from now on to be able to sort of adapt to any other things that I need to uh, put into it. So now it's time to remove it all from the car, and I'll show you how we start building a wiring loom that actually works, I hope.
Okay, so when I lay it all out, there's actually quite a lot of rope here, but um, I've sort of tried to get it uh, to make a little bit of sense uh, to where things go. But uh, ultimately, it's all about just following the template that I have, which is the rope, and um, marking down where everything is. So uh, this is now loosely on the table. I need to fix it a little bit more firmly, and this is something I've been sort of... Uh, coming up with sort of all sorts of solutions in my head. And um, what I think I've come up with is going to be some screws and some cable ties. Okay, so as you saw, I laid the rope out all onto this table here and then got it sort of into a, a neat-ish sort of layout. And then I went through and uh, using uh, just some self-tapping screws and some cable ties. Actually, uh, Raceworks has these really cool table ties that have got a little um, eyelet on them, so it makes it really easy to, uh, to screw them in if you're going to mount them in a car or whatever. Uh, and uh, basically ran out my entire loom setup and then I've gone through and at the ends I've used, I've got a bunch of these bulldog clips um, from when I put the uh, headliner into Harry. And uh, I've used them so they'll be able to hold wires at the end. And then I've gone through and then I've transcribed all of the, uh, the spots on the wire to show me exactly where uh, I am in the scheme of things and how everything's laid out. All of the joins, all of everything. So now I actually have a map here on the board of how everything is going to go together. So uh, next I'm gonna actually put the, uh, the rope back into the Alferrari so that I can reference it for any other bits that I've missed. Alright, so uh, I thought I would have a bit of a break now and talk a little bit about wire. And I have been diving down a rabbit hole. I am definitely not an expert. I am far from it. But I'm starting to wrap my head around uh, the different things you need, the different sizes of wire, the different types of wire. There's a whole massive rabbit hole to go down. And... Um, Basically, I've got a bunch of different types here. I've invested quite a lot of money. Wire is actually really expensive. Um, by the time you add it up and try and get a bunch of different colors, it, uh, it does start adding up. And um, basically, a lot of automotive guys, um, if you want to check out, Rob Darn just did a really good video on building a, uh, an engine loom for uh, one of his cars, doing it the the full motorsport way with concentric twisting and uh, uh, high-end wire and high-end heat shrink and, and very, very good quality uh, work, but very, very expensive. The wire is expensive, the heat shrink's expensive, you have to buy big kits of everything. And to be honest, for this car, it's overkill. This is not, uh, we're not going motorsport grade, I'm going more closer to what OEMs do, and OEMs don't go anywhere near what motorsport do. Motorsport grade is, is next level. They're after keeping it small, keeping it tight, and keeping it completely waterproof, oilproof, um, because of you know adverse conditions on race cars, um, like high-end race cars, they really go to town. That's not what we're doing here. Uh, and that's where it comes to different types of wire. So. Um, so the higher end stuff is, uh, there's, there's a brand called Tefcel, or this is, uh, and this stuff here is actually TXL wire. So what it means is, and from what I can gather, 
almost whether you get the sort of the 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 cheapy super cheap wire or you get sort of uh, like a sort of automotive grade regular automotive grade wire or you get this sort of motor motorsport grade wire the actual wire inside is all pretty much the same stuff it's all pretty much copper wire inside these um uh inside these sheets the big difference is what the sheathing is and how much insulation there is how thick the insulation is and um the high end motorsport stuff is um built to be impervious to more things and also um it's it's thinner so you have uh just as good or better insulation properties but being thinner so you can make a smaller loom and you're you're using less stuff for me i don't care that much how big the loom is i'm not trying to uh yeah i so said i'm not trying to build a motorsport um thing so this stuff is very expensive um much more expensive than the regular stuff and um yeah some people are going to scream because i'm not using all Tefcel or TXL type uh, type cables, and uh, I'm good with that. Basically, what I believe most of this stuff is um, it's PVC V90, which is uh, similar to what most of the OEMs use. It's a uh, it's a you know it's a it's a decent coating that's uh, not the thinnest, not the um, not the greatest, but but plenty good enough for what I'm doing. And I've got a bunch of different sizes here. Sizes are something else that really I was just like tearing my hair out uh i was looking at um a bunch of different wiring charts and one chart will say that um awg american wire gauge um 16 is good for this and then uh, for, for this range at this length and uh and then another chart will say awg 16 is is a, good for a completely different range and there, there was no consistency they're all over the place it was driving me crazy um i managed to go and get stuff all from one manufacturer or one supplier um and even then it was driving me nuts because i've got um these two rolls um you probably can't see it there but they're both classed as four millimeter wire but this stuff the actual uh, center core of the wire is at least double as thick as this and it's got about double the amperage rating uh, that this does so I don't know but um, I just picked the stuff with the uh, the rating for the parts that I'm going to be connecting it to so um, roughly generally what you want is you want to check out what uh, you're running so if you're running um, uh, a headlight bulb so you need something that will be able to be uh, carry 10 watts through that circuit at the distance you want because the further you go the thicker the gauge you need that's what i've gathered i am far from an expert but uh, anyway that is a little bit of uh, covering on uh, wires and as i said i've got a bunch of ranges here from super thin stuff to super thick stuff this is you know battery cables is uh, is quite heavy duty stuff you obviously need particularly to run the battery from the back of the car to the front of the car i need very heavy duty cable um going on to the um the the rest of the car i found a good way to do at least the small stuff and the sensors and things is um um i i use some of this already on the rockster it's quite a good cheap way of getting wire is um this is seven core trailer wire so this is all insulated with seven small cores inside and this stuff is good enough to run the indicators and things like that but still too small for running headlights and stuff like that so um good cheap way of getting you know a few different colors i've got only a, a a couple of different colors here and i'll explain how i'm going to get around that later but um for starters I think it's time to make a bit of a wire dispenser. I need to take a bit of a break and uh, make uh, something to actually feed these wi this wire out. And I've done a bit of research on this. And if you're like me, like most people, you look at um, these reels of wire and they've got a big hole through the middle of them. So basically you would think that making something like a curtain rod like this would be the best way to make a wire dispenser. And uh, if you are like me, 
you would be wrong because this is actually um, not the greatest way. I actually watched a really good video from Adam Savage uh, on his channel about uh, going through that he had wired this way for quite some time. And, uh, and I always thought, well, yeah, this is the perfect way. But there's a lot of uh, issues with this is when you start reeling it out, it, there's nothing to stop it from uh, just unraveling and uh, and spinning. And also, if you wanted to take, say, this uh, this yellow wire off and take it to your job, you have to take your curtain rail off, take off all of the bits of wire, get your yellow one, and then when you finish, you've got to put it all back together again. And it's just not a convenient way of doing it. There is a better method, and uh, let's start uh, making a bit of a wire dispenser now. All right, so that was a little bit of time out making my um, wire racks, but this is stealing Adam Savage's design, and as I said, it's much better than having him on a spool. Basically, you can see I've built a trough. I've got a, uh, a clear uh, acrylic sort of front. I just used some scrap old skirting boards and some uh, acrylic I had lying around. I've drilled holes in the front, so I can basically grab hold of a wire and pull out however much I need, cut it off, but also, if I need to take this roll with me to the job, I can just pick it up and take it to the job. And then when I'm finished, I just feed the wire back through this little hole again and uh, put it back in the rack. Much, much better way of uh, distributing the wire. So now I actually have these. It's time to start laying out the basic uh, systems onto this. Sorry, the rain is starting to come in. Um, yeah, start laying out wires onto my board using my template and just pick one wire at a time and get stuck in. All right, so let's just go through some of the tools and stuff that I'm using in this uh, particular build. This is a Deutsch crimping tool. So uh, we use these little Deutsch pins, which I'm going to use to stick into my, uh, my Mo unit. And uh, these are specific crimpers for these, nice and easy, nice and quick, uh, really handy uh, bit of gear. Uh, some good crimpers. So um, the uh, the plastic covered sheath crimp things you get are generally horrible. These are really nice splices. These are the splices I use. These are Raceworks um, splices, if it'll focus. Um, these little things are great and you need a really good set of crimpers. Now these crimpers are really good. As you can see, they... Um, See how they've, they've sort of got a double loop at one end? So they curve the, uh, um, the crimp over on top of itself. I'll give you a bit more of a display of this in a little bit. Good set of wire strippers. These are nice and easy. Just grab hold of the wire and then strip the, uh, the wire off. Nice, handy bit of gear. Definitely need a good set of them. Some good little uh, flush cut side cutters. And uh, I've just gone out and got myself a, uh, a new labeler. So uh, this labeler actually prints out heat shrink tube. So I'm going to label all of my, uh, all of the ends of my gear so I know exactly what's what. So by labeling everything either end, I don't actually need that many colors because I can, instead of having to look up uh, a million different colors of a wiring chart, I can just look at either end of the wire and go, oh, that's the left turn wire. Um, doesn't really matter what color it is because it's labeled. Uh, going on, I've got some heat shrink tube and a crack lighter. Uh, these things are uh, quite handy for uh, for you know sealing heat shrink tube and stuff like that. So, um, got my basic bits and pieces now. So um, I've uh, already laid out one uh, run just for as a test. Let's go through and I'll uh, I'll show you through running the next. So uh, next, I think we'll do the left hand indicators. Uh, a lot of you were asking about the PDM. This is it here. It's not sponsored. It's a Mo unit, a M unit blue. All right, so left hand indicators. Uh, in this case, I think I'm going to use blue. So blue is going to be my left hand indicator. Um, I can just pull that out of my little dispenser and start running it through the track through to where I need to go. So. 
It's all around, past the right headlight already done. Sorry, back up, this my door. Wide block here. Left turn, that looks great. Now, because obviously we've got indicators at the front of the car, but we've also got indicators at the rear of the car, we need to splice it. So I'm gonna put my splice next to where I did the other one, which is be up here, cut the end of it off. And let's run the other end to the back of the car. Let's put another label on the end of this. Oh, come on! What did you do? Uh, I was going for uh, the Bon Jovi in the 80s look. Uh, come on. You mean like Napoleon Dynamite? <laughs> Four I'm out. Much better. Let's get back to work. So you can see here, I've got all of the light circuits all set up already in my Mo unit. I used uh, Deutsch connectors into uh, to slot in and uh, I'll be able to group this all together and loom it to cover the loom later. And you can see it's all laid out. So uh, as we go round, you can see at the ends, I've clipped it off and I've uh, labeled them all. So this is the, uh, obviously the right headlight. So we've got high beam, we've got the headlight and we've got the turn signal. Um, and then obviously, you know, every other end, this is the, uh, the left headlight, left tail light, and then uh, all the way around, everything's been spliced and heat shrunk. So now we have all of the light circuits down, it's time to start having a look at the other circuits on the car. All right, next thing, I have a relay box that I need to fit to the car, and uh, this is gonna sit under the dash up near where the ECU is. I've already got a mounting spot. This is something I got on eBay. It was nice and cheap. It's got uh, spots for six relays and six fuses for those relays. So it's a nice little neat generic packaging. Um, so I'm going to screw it to my table right about here. So let's uh, screw this down and keep moving on uh, filling out this wiring loom. All right, so the looms are getting a little bit more complicated, but I've run through the uh, central locking and electric window wiring looms that came with those individual kits and integrated them into my loom. So it's looking slightly messy, but everything is still laid out in its uh, individual uh, directions and everything's going to its individual components. And I'm quite happy with the progress. All right, well, I am really happy with my progress so far on this. Uh, as I said, it probably looks daunting, but laying it all out like this is fantastic. These wire dispensers are fantastic. It was well worth me spending the time stopping to make them up. Uh, and it's all getting there. It's all coming together. Um, before any of you say something like, uh, I know, Squeezing the wires with uh, these bulldog clips could potentially damage the wire and uh, they are all past where I'm going to put fittings on them uh, eventually, so don't worry about that. So uh, yeah, it is coming together really nicely. It's really good, but I am out of time today uh, and I'm out of label, so uh, out of uh, heat shrink label, so I'm gonna have to go and get some more of that, which uh, I think that means it must be time for fun facts with Mrs. Jeff. Hey guys, 1959 saw Ferrari introduce one of the most beautiful sports cars ever made with the 250 GT short wheelbase. Powered by the iconic 3 litre Colombo V12, there are 176 examples of this made in a range of specifications ranging from the lightweight aluminium bodied Competizione to the Lusso Road version with 240 horsepower to 280 horsepower. This is one of Ferrari's first production cars with 
disc brakes. The 250 short wheelbase won Ferrari the 1961 Sports Car Constructors Championship as well as the 1960, 61 and 62 Tour de France Automobile. In 1962 Ferrari introduced the 250 GT Lusso which was larger and more luxurious and not intended for racing. It attracted many of the notable celebrities of the time including Steve McQueen and Eric Clapton. All right, uh, hopefully um, you got something out of this episode. I'm actually, uh, I'm actually sort of enjoying the Warwick, believe it or not. Uh, as crazy as it sounds, it's actually, yeah, it's quite satisfying sort of laying it all out and getting, mm. getting my head around the concept of how this all goes together. And uh, having everything nicely labelled and, and laid out is just going to be so nice when I'm putting it all together. It's, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm quite happy and I'm, I, I can see my, feel myself learning as I'm going. I'm getting, you know, getting new skills in all these things and, and understanding better how every part of the car works and where I need to put it, you know, it needs to run through a fuse or in this case through the, um, the M unit or whatever. Yeah, so... Uh, I think it's really yeah. clever what you've done. I think that's very, very smart. And yes. And yeah. the wider dispensers are fantastic. So much better than having it on a reel or something. I'm, I'm very happy with that choice. It was worth spending the time to make those things up there. They're great. <sighs> All right. Please like and subscribe if you haven't and let Jeff know what you think. Um, and if you want to follow Jeff on Patreon and see the videos a day early, that adds and help him out and keep him in his arts and crafts <laughs> <laughs> or hairdresser's appointments. Yes. Um, follow him on Patreon. Yay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and uh, we'll see you next week. <laughs> All right. See you guys. Introduce one of the most beautiful support cars ever made. Not support cars, just sport cars. <laughs> That's my job. Powered by the iconic <clears throat> 260 horsepower to 280 horsepower. No, 240 to 280. Oh my god, I did it again. The 250 short wheelbase was with what? What's this word? The two, two, two what? What? One. The 250 short wheelbase one. Oh, one. Automobile, Tour de France. Oh, 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 oh.